Hello, welcome to 4 Minute Film School. I'm V from the A-Team, and today we are doing a sportswear ad, something you would see like on a Nike or Adidas commercial. It's dark, it's gritty, and it's in black and white. Let's go. All right, I'm here with Oliver Lukacs. He is a cinematographer here in Los Angeles. He does music videos, Western, horror films. And today we are making a commercial. What is the vibe we're going for? Sort of like a, a Nike or Adidas commercial. Like a sportswear apparel, but drama. So this entire scene is in black and white. How come you chose to make it that way? I wanted it to be very dramatic. It's limiting in a, in a way that's creatively challenging. So the first shot you lit for is this wide going into medium. It's on a dolly. And I see this big kind of strip of light along the bottom. What was that? That was light leaking in from the bottom of an, uh, of an elephant door that we closed almost all the way. It provides you with separation from the background and it gives you a depth cue so you get a sense of parallax when you're pushing in. And then your brightest light, your main light, was actually more of a rim. Yeah, it was It was a hard edge backlight. Uh, it was a 300D Mark II with the Fresnel modifier on it. And then we had a book light to, as the key light. How did you achieve that book light? The book light was another 300D Mark II with a Fresnel lens punching into an 8x Ultra Bounce T-bone. And I got pushed through an 8x quarter grid. On a T bone. So why do a book light for this type of diffusion instead of say bouncing it off a white card or double diffusing it? Book light forces the light to struggle more than if you do it directly and diffuse it. The more light struggles, the more natural it feels. So yeah, the light is traveling almost further in that first it's bouncing, then it's diffusing. So I noticed in the shot you actually have no fill at all. Yeah, I decided not to use fill because I think it's it's more dramatic. Some people always want to have fill because they want to be safe to see the details and the shadows and I think uh, you don't always need to see every detail in the shadow. Speaking of seeing more detail, you did do a little bit more of a close-up shot. You punched in on his face and this was another dolly shot, but this time not a straightforward dolly, right? Yeah, it was just a banana movement so on a curved track and we moved the book light closer to his face so that there was more wrap and the lights in his eyes were a little more prominent kept the backlight where it was, and added a little bit of uh, atmosphere. And as you're going around that track, I notice another light sort of appears in the background. It's this vertical strip of light. What was that? Oh yeah, that was the entrance, the front door to the gym. We left it at like a crack open, so you have a depth cue, and then you can feel the parallax. And uh, now you also did another close-up, but this time you went low on the shoes. Right. What did you change up for that? We opened the elephant door in the background because we wanted to indicate passage of time. We took the 300D that was the hard back edge and just put it on the ground so it was on level with his feet and it was sort of scraping the floor at the same time. What I also like about having the elephant door open was that you get that reflection in the floor as well. And of course, why have a sports ad if you don't have a gratuitous shot of a muscle flexing, right? What was the lighting for that? We used something we call a sandwich light, which is a light from both sides. And one was a hard light and the other one was a book light. So that you had a hard edge on one side of the muscle and then you had nice soft roll off. So you can see like the veins sort of popping up. What are some tips for people for shooting in black and white? If you're intending to deliver in black and white, you should light for black and white. So on set, if you can, have a monitoring light or to saturate in internally so that you know what your end image is going to look like. All right, let's take a look at this whole scene. All right, Oliver, if we want to shoot something similar to this, what are some things we should keep in mind? Uh, using a combination of hard backlight with a soft key light, knowing what your final look is going to be before you start shooting it, lighting to that look on set, and the third is uh, using depth cues as much as possible. Depth cues like, for example, in that close-up shot of the face, having that light in the background to help parallax, 
and show off the depth of the space. So as far as shooting black and white goes, we want to know for your comment question, what is a movie that was shot in color that uh, would have worked a lot better if it was done in black and white? Let us know, and the best answer is going to win an empty SKB case. If you like this episode, if you like what we do, then please give us a like, literally like us on YouTube. Follow, subscribe if you want to follow either of us. Our social media links are going to be down below. That's it. See you next time. Adios, amigos.